All right. Are you having a cup of coffee while you watch us? You may want to put it down. Americans drink 400 million cups of coffee every single day. Despite having so many health benefits, the way you take your coffee could make or break you. But Dr. Oz <laughs> says there are plenty of ways to make the most out of your morning cup, and he joins us here live. Hey, Dr. Oz. Good morning. Good you know, it's funny you. how coffee has changed so much. I was out in the, in the green room with Mayor Giuliani. He has an IV hooked up with coffee. <laughs> and he was saying when he was a kid, everyone said it would stunt your growth. And now we know that. It helps with mood, with depression. Sure. It helps with memory. Asthma. Uh, asthma. Opens up your uh, veins it does. and very, very good. Thank that you. told me. Very good. Yeah, I watch your show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it helps with liver uh, issues, uh, with, with diabetes. Obviously gives you energy. Most energy drinks have it. So there are a lot of health benefits. But the real issue we're going to talk about today is, is it really healthy for you the way we take it every day? That's a great question. There are tricks to finding the best coffee for you, for instance, and you and I were just talking about this. My daughter and I had the conversation over the weekend, which is stronger or better for you, light beans, light roasted or dark roasted. I thought dark roasted because they're really cooked, but that's the problem. They're really cooked, and then the good stuff is cooked pretty so much So the reason out. coffee is so good for you are things called polyphenols. These are very important chemicals. In fact, the number one source, pick this, this is really cool. The number one source of antioxidants in our entire diet is coffee. Wow. So it's actually really helpful to us, but when we dark roast coffee, we actually destroy a lot of those antioxidants. So mm -hmm. a light roast is better. All right. Uh, so that's this easy transition. The caffeine quantity is more linked to how long the water touches the coffee bean. So typical American coffee actually will often have more caffeine than an espresso just because of how it's prepared. Huh. But the other factors come into play as well. Like, is it organic mm. or not? Organic coffee does make a difference if you're worried about pesticides. Theoretically, you'd kill off all the pesticides, destroy them, denature them when you heated them. But it's a, and then the other issue is how do you preserve it? People throw it in the freezer, in the fridge. You want to roast that coffee right in front of you. Right. Have them put it in one of those bags with a little vent on it. You want the vent yeah. to let the CO2 come out. What about the big barrel? Uh, at a lot of stores, you see bulk coffee. Yeah. I wouldn't use that because that coffee has been there for a while. Coffee is a perishable item. You want to pick them the way you pick strawberries. You want fresh stuff, prepare right. it and preserve it the right way. Uh, and again, if you have it in the right kind of bag, it'll last for about a week. But keep it on a counter, keep it in a dark spot, and don't expose it to air. And if you are uh, listening on radio right now, uh, what about these tips? Uh, number one, you said avoid putting sugar uh, the, the full screen we just had up. Yeah. Avoid putting sugar on uh, light, light roast. Uh, the, the problem with dark roast actually is it gets, you know, it's, and light roast is it, some people like the bitterness or don't like the bitterness, so it camouflage that you'll add more sugar. The problem with coffee, this everyone, it's not the coffee, it's the sugar and the cream. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cream, what's the other half of half and half? Do you guys I don't know? know? No idea. Fat, butter, <laughs> right. fat. So it's actually cream, which is 30% okay. fat, okay. with uh, with rigamin, which is 3% fat. So you want to avoid putting too much of that. Have it black. And have, what about? Have it black. Can you do like Splenda and those kinds of things, as substitutes? Yeah, of course you could, but here's but the thing: the, 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 they don't really work. They're a false promise. You're not going to lose weight Stevia? with those. Bad? They're not bad for you. Okay. You can use them, but listen: the teaspoon of sugar is 15 calories. That's not why you're heavy. It Go ahead and up. put the real stuff in there. A little sugar was fine. Got it. Tiny bit with some black coffee. Don't add too much of the cream, and it's a great morning beverage. And this is going to be your topic on your show today. It's today's topic. We got good stuff. And tomorrow, lots of people losing tons of weight. We're going to talk a little bit about this New York Times article about uh, what happens to the biggest loser. Why is it the people who lose weight can't keep it down? Uh, yeah, they yeah, they're Excellent. coming back worse. Yeah, right. But it all comes down to awareness. But you guys all know all that right. already. And by yeah. the way, uh, making you aware, uh, Dr. Oz and his daughter Penelope, uh, Lisa, uh, Daffy, uh, Daffy. That's right. <laughs> Both won. Emmys over the weekend. Congratulations. Congratulations. It was a highlight, uh, actually, for me to watch my daughter. I mean, I, 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 it's an honor for me, too, but to watch your daughter walk up there, it's, whole, it's yeah. a special experience. Yeah. We're very proud because she was our intern. You guys trained her. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> you tuned her up. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Dr. Right. Good to see you.